if Zelensky is as responsible for the war as Putin, uh, this war could have been avoided. And I really fault the United States and the U.S. State Department uh, and the White House. Like, again, this is a war that could have been avoided. What's happening in Ukraine is a tragedy. Uh, and what Putin is doing is unforgivable. So I just want to be clear about that. The fact that it wasn't avoided uh, represents as much a failure on the part of the United States and, and the Ukrainian government uh, as it does um, you know, a matter of pointing a finger at Putin for actually firing the first shot. The dollar was the global reserve currency. It is the global reserve currency and it will always be the global reserve currency. It was critical to Russia that Ukraine be neutral. And when I say neutral, it doesn't mean, you know, deep in the Russian camp. It just means neutral. Austria was neutral during the Cold War. Finland was neutral during the Cold War. Today, they're more pro-Western, but you know, that's that's today. But in the 1950s and 1960s, I mean, Austria was um, Austria, but it wasn't. It wasn't part of the EU. It wasn't part of NATO. It wasn't, uh, you know, really firmly in the Western camp. Um, that's what Russia wanted Ukraine to be. Just look at where Ukraine is. It's like a dagger pointed at Moscow. Um, the eastern part of Ukraine is actually east of Moscow. Moscow has not been attacked from the east since Genghis Khan. I mean, they've been there in wars back and forth, Napoleon, Hitler, uh, uh, you know, the Warsaw Bloc, the NATO, etc. That that front in central eastern Europe, where, which Ukraine is part of, but also Poland and uh, Belarus and uh, Romania and Bulgaria and a lot of other countries, that, that's been fought over for for centuries, but the idea that you could actually attack Moscow from the east, uh, which is what you can do from Ukraine, uh, is uh, unacceptable in, in the Russian view. I've had you know, many other discussions at the Pentagon, you know, CIA and elsewhere, the Fed and the Treasury for that matter, where I tell them, I explain this to them. And they're gonna say, okay, enough, uh, I'm getting out of the dollar system because you're using the dollar system to take me down. So why would I be in that system? Um, what's interesting to me uh, right now is that, you know, in my world, you read, you know, Zero Hedge or Credit Suisse or Wall Street Research, but the buzz is, wait, wait a second, look around. China and Russia are going to get a lot of gold and develop cryptocurrencies and get out from under dollar hegemony and they're going to do an end run around the dollar and it's the end of the dollar. It's like, yeah, that, which is that Russia and China would accumulate gold. The, so I guess it's good to be ahead of your time. But, um, but we warned the Pentagon. And the fact is, at the time we did that war game, Russia had 600 tons of gold. Today, they have 2,300 tons of gold. In other words, they did exactly what we told the Pentagon they would do. And um, I don't buy into the, uh, you know, Zelensky is a new Churchill. Zelensky is very much, uh, Zelensky is as responsible for the war as Putin. They had an election. They elected a uh, president uh, who in uh, late 2013 was clearly, I would say pro-Russian. You know, he was he was running a, a middle ground. It was it was neutral, but he was clearly pro-Russian. Was the election probably corrupt? Yeah. Is there corruption in Ukraine? Absolutely. So I'm not saying this is some sort of you know Athenian democracy. Far from it. But it was an election. He was duly elected. The CIA and MI6 and the Obama White House and David Cameron in the UK and others uh, decided that wasn't good enough. They wanted Ukraine in NATO. They wanted others wanted Ukraine in the EU, and they staged a coup. There were uh, agent provocateurs and uh, CIA agents and uh, snipers and others uh, working around the fringes, ginning it up, uh, killing innocent people, caught a coup. It was successful. The president kind of fled for his life, went to Russia, um, and they then put in a U.S. puppet, uh, Poroshenko. It took a few months, but they installed him uh, and, then, and then went on. But th at that point, Ukraine was on a track to join NATO, join the EU, and you did have, in effect, a U.S. puppet government. Now they see NATO encircling Moscow. Uh, there's nothing in between. There are no mountain ranges, no major rivers. Um, there's nothing standing in the way of a, just rolling up to a Red Square, uh, and that's unacceptable to the Russians. I think it's too easy uh, to paint um, a Vladimir Putin as just this evil figure. Uh, when you do that, you're, you're really missing uh, a lot of context, a lot of nuance. He, look, he started the war, it's on his hands, he, he's responsible for it, no, no question about that. So, but I guess I'm struck by the, the number of times 
Putin warned people. He said, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. All he wanted, all you had to do to stop this war was to make a, a binding declaration, some kind of treaty or protocol that uh, Ukraine would not join NATO and that it would remain neutral. It could be independent, do your own thing, have elections, have autonomy, but you had to agree to two things. Don't join NATO and, by, and, and the EU, I would say, and remain neutral. The U.S. refused to sign up for that, as did the U.K., as did the EU, as did NATO, as did Ukraine. Yeah, now getting out from under the dollar is easier said than done. But it's like a lot of um, complex networks, which it, it is, it's one of, one of many. But if you understand complexity theory and scaling metrics and what physicists call emergent properties, one of the characteristics is like, yeah, they work really well. Let's keep making it bigger and bigger and bigger, but they collapse really fast. I kind of outlined the scenario and, and this deputy assistant secretary of the U.S. Treasury, he, he took both hands and, and slammed them palm down on the table. Boom! Like that. He goes, the dollar was the global reserve currency. It is the global reserve currency, and it will always be the global reserve currency. And uh, I turned to him and said, David, I feel like I'm uh, listening to John Bull on Whitehall in 1913, when at a time when they were quite sure that sterling would always be the global reserve currency. But here we are, I think, at a point where these sanctions uh, and I've read them all as like 100 pages of material. New ones are coming out every day, but I, I did a deep dive on it for some clients. And um, the, these, the first, the first announcement was like nothing. That was a like nothing burger. But, but the second round uh, that Biden issued and the Treasury issued on, I think February 26th, that's the real deal. They're they're shutting down the Russian economy. However, the unanticipated or unexpected consequence of that is that big hunks of the economy, starting with Russia and China, are going to get out of the dollar system. So it's kind of a big deal. Uh, Putin wasted, Putin, Putin saw this and said, okay, I've made my red line clear. I've made my intentions clear. I've made Russia's priorities clear. You just trampled over all of it. So now it's time for the pushback. And in a, in a matter of a few months, Putin took Crimea. Um, the Russian fleet is based in Crimea, in Sevastopol. So um, the, uh, so that's, that, that's, critical so there was no way that putin could let that be you know part of nato so they just took it so but i guess i'm struck by the, the number of times putin warned people he said don't do it don't do it don't do it all he wanted and this gets back to what i said at the beginning all you had to do to stop this war was to make a, a binding declaration some kind of treaty or protocol that uh, ukraine would not join nato and that it would remain neutral it could be independent do your own thing have elections, have autonomy, but you had to agree to two things. Don't join NATO and, by, and, and the EU, I would say, and remain neutral. Uh, this war could have been avoided, and I really fought the United States and the US State Department uh, and the White House. Again, this is a war that could have been avoided. The fact that it wasn't avoided uh, represents as much a failure on the part of the United States and, and the Ukrainian government uh, as it does, um, you know, a matter of pointing a finger at Putin for actually firing the first shot.